for those of y'all that thought it was ridiculous for to spend a couple hundred bucks an acre on herbicides and pre-emergence for our pumpkins i just wanted to give you a little little update we are let's see two two days after i sprayed this for my second burn down plus pre-emergence lamb's quarters is a huge problem for us it's got this slick leaf like a broccoli herbicide just won't hard to stick to it once it gets this size it's incredibly hard to kill you can kill it with 2,4-D or something like that pretty easy but with herbicides that you can use alongside your crop you about can't kill this crap and I just want to show you all this lamb's quarters that is just absolutely smoked right here is another another prime example top is done and the whole stem itself is dying down to the ground and with that concoction the free emergent that i used this stuff ain't coming back right here's another patch of stuff that is incredibly hard to kill and I, I won't guarantee that i've killed this stuff i think i call this crap velvet leaf uh, i'm not sure but it's it's evidently like johnson grass because it seems to spread from the root system but anyway uh, there's not a ton of that stuff but hopefully i got it too but anyway the uh the second burn down and pre-emerge gave some really good looking results and uh, pumpkin should get off to a fantastic start if it will ever rain you can see i kind of punched them in the dust but pumpkins and squash are pretty tough they'll lay there and wait on water for a while if the mice don't eat them all right on to the actual subject matter of today's video i had a lot of folks comment and ask questions about my weed wiper that I mentioned a couple of videos back, two or three videos back, when I was spraying sweet corn and whatnot. And I told you that I'd make a video about it. And you may be disappointed a little bit if you're expecting something elaborate and grand. This is not it. But it is very effective. So this is my old XR70. I'd like to say from when I was a kid, but it's not. I was uh, in my late teens or early 20s when I bought this. Had a lot of fun on it and gave it to my son, my youngest son, for Christmas a couple years ago. He doesn't seem to show a lot of interest in it, um, but even if he did, I mean, he would still let me use it, obviously, because <laughs> I bought it. But I made... A couple of arms out of just some three-quarter scrap tubing that come off of the swing arm you can see how I bolted these made these little brackets and bolted this thing to the swing arm put a gusset in it and came back put a bar across the back and there's a little piece of flat bar with a bend in it for strength with holes to bolt these four economy mop heads from Lowe's on and then I just made these little straps here and glued up this little PVC doodad um, this end here has got a screw on cap so I can fill it up with my wiping herbicide and this tube has four holes in it that valve is to turn the flow off if I'm moving or if I need to cut down the, the flow rate. It's easy to control weeds when the crop's young. When tomatoes are short, you can spray every top of them with tricor. And as long as the weeds are short, you can pretty well smoke those weeds. That tricor will do a good job of keeping weeds from coming back for a while. Uh, you spray dual magnum and reflex over your tomato, pretty much all your vegetable ground before you transplant or seed and they do a good job of holding weeds back. But it's inevitable, by the time your tomatoes or your half runners get to the top of the stick, 
or your cucumbers get up trellised up if you trellis them it's inevitable you're going to have some weed problems in between your rows and if I really I don't like spraying them because there's not a lot of good options um, you can you can spray I'm not here to give off-label advice but you can spray Liberty I'm pretty sure Liberty's not labeled for spraying row middles of produce but Liberty is not a bad option because it's a contact herbicide it's not gonna drift but Liberty is so finicky like the Sun's got to be shining bright you got to use the correct surfactant um, so it's it's not a not ideal Roundup is okay it's fairly safe but if you get any drift on your tomatoes or pretty much any of your produce it's gonna be dead as a hammer because Roundup systemic get a little sprinkle on a couple of the bottom leaves it's gonna kill the plant aim is not a bad option it's actually labeled for uh, spray and row middles it is a contact herbicide like Gramoxone or Liberty so it's only gonna kill what it gets on so if you if you mess up and you get a, a tomato leaf you're not gonna kill the whole plant but uh, aim is it's an emulsifiable concentrate it's a little more volatile and I have found that it's if you're spraying it it is super easy to speckle up a crop really bad with aim um, I mean like it'll make you think you dang near killed it and that's being very careful with a hooded sprayer and it'll just look like it has rained acid on a crop I've done that with cantaloupes I don't know if cantaloupes are more susceptible to aim damage but anyway so wiping is a good option well when the crops are up on sticks tomatoes are trellised to the top of the stick um, the squash are vined out big whatever it's it's not ideal to drive through the field and unless you got a high crop tractor or high boy sprayer you're not gonna drive through the field so it really limits your options for wiping and I'm sure they make some kind of push wipe wiper um, that you could buy and I have I have toyed with all kinds of different hooded sprayers spraying one and two rows at a time but there again the two row deal is not going to work after the sticks in the field so the my rows of plastic mulch are close enough together that even a narrow lawnmower is not going to work so the thing that I came up with that does work is I can ride this little dirt bike down between every row dragging this this is exactly the width of my plastic mulch it's low enough to the ground when it's standing up it seems to be just the right height because it's right about the top of the plastic so it doesn't catch any any plants that are down either side if they're hanging out a little bit but it does seem to catch all the weeds without drifting I can use um, aim and round up safely and not have to worry about white, getting it on my tomatoes and causing a catastrophe um, the reason I like to use uh, roundup and aim is because roundup don't discriminate it kills everything except for the weeds that are resistant to it like uh, Palmer amaranth which we've got plenty of lambs quarters mare's tail uh, horse nettle just to, to name a few problems that we have but aim does an outstanding job at killing all of those so that's that's what I, I use for herbicide in this wiper um, not a fan of gramoxone I use gramoxone from time to time like in the last video I think it was the last video you saw me use gramoxone spraying these pumpkins um, but anytime I'm gonna be in close proximity to it like handling jugs and this wiper and everything your moxone is 100% poisonous it will kill you it'll make you very sick if you get it you get enough of it on you so I try to 
avoid Grimoxone. Um, definitely try to avoid it for backpacking. I think it's actually illegal since they came out with the new 3.0 to backpack spray it. But uh, anyway, wiping, in my opinion, Grimoxone is not ideal for wiping anyway. It, there may be some people that argue with me on that. But Grimoxone seems to me that if, you don't, if you're not using a pretty high rate and just really fogging the Grimoxone over the weeds, it just doesn't seem to do a very good job of killing. Um, that's the reason, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, when I was spraying this pumpkin land, spray, I slowed way down and uh, got my rate up close to 20 gallons to the acre so that I could really fog it in there and um, smoke this stuff. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up now and get to work. Oh, one more thing. For wiping weeds, I've been told, and I, this is the way I do it, is about a 50-50 ratio of herbicide to water. So I use, pretty much, I use that jug half full of Roundup, a splash of AIM, uh, because AIM is extremely potent, and then fill it up with water. So that's about a 50-50 concoction, Roundup, AIM, and water, and surfactant. You gotta have the, your surfactant in there, especially, in my opinion, for wiping, because it's gonna stick it to the weeds and help it to spread over the, the leaves. Anyway, I'm gonna get some herbicide in this thing and uh, get out here and let y'all see it in action. I appreciate you guys watching. See you next time.